for more on this hot topic. I'm joined by Ebong Eka, consultant with Levy T Consulting. And also joining us from New York City is Ovik Roy, senior fellow of the Manhattan Institute and former healthcare policy advisor to Mitt Romney. Ovik, uh, let's start with you in New York. Tell me something about this Obamacare that's good about it. Well, I think the best thing about the law is that it encourages more people to shop for insurance on their own. Economists of both uh, liberal and conservative persuasions have long felt that the system we have today in America, where people get insurance through their employer or the government, rather than getting it by themselves, shopping for policies for themselves, as they do with all other forms of insurance, is a profoundly inefficient system. Because when you shop for things yourself, you're likely to buy the plan that is right for you in terms of value and cost. And we don't do that today. And one of the good things about Obamacare is that it, it gently moves us in that direction. Ivan, this health care bill that's already been passed, by the way, we're still debating about it today well after that's been passed. Why has this been so controversial for the American public? Well, it's a hot button topic because the, the, the biggest misconception is that a lot of other people are going to be paying for the health care needs of the poor and the people who, don't, who aren't insured. And that's what's driving a lot of the opposition thus far. The Republicans argue that Obamacare is going to create less options for consumers. It's going to make it possibly more expensive for small businesses. Is that true? Well, see, this is, that's part of the problem. And there was a recent study that came out, I think, directly, indirectly through the Chamber of Commerce and reported on by The Hill, where that they said that a majority of people, they said about maybe 41% of the people aren't ready for Obamacare to be implemented. But more importantly, I think there's a lot of, or I believe there's a lot of confusion as to what actually Obamacare entails and how does that affect me as a small business owner. Ovik, the president today spoke at the White House specifically about this specific issue, saying essentially that, yes, it's not a perfect system, but it's much better than the one that we had before. He basically urged a lot of critics, and he pointed fingers at Congress as well, saying that basically they're trying to stop something that potentially is good for the country. Is that true? Yeah, so look, I mean, Congress is its own thing, and I, I wouldn't necessarily say that Congress always does its job well. But there can be no doubt, and this is something that the president really was quite irresponsible about today, claiming that people's premiums will go down when, in fact, in nearly every state in America, people who buy insurance for themselves today are going to see insurance go up by 100 percent, 70 percent. 130 percent. I've done, I've run the numbers on three or four states. We at the Manhattan Institute are going on a county by county analysis for every state in, or every county in the country. And we're seeing huge increases all over the country with a few exceptions like New York City, because New York City had such a poor regulatory regime to begin with that Obamacare could only make things better. So the, here's oh, oh, the thing. Oh, Vic, I want to interrupt president... here. I, you know, you're doing these studies on this, but I want to ask you, Besides the cost of medical care, let's set that aside for just a moment. Would this benefit more Americans with this plan than would without? But see, this is the thing, Philip, is cost is king. If people can't afford to buy insurance, then insurance doesn't serve its purpose, right? So the real problem, the fundamental problem with health care in America is that it's too expensive. It's too expensive for the government. That's why we have chronic deficits, because the federal government is spending enormous amounts of money financing health insurance. And for people who aren't beneficiaries of the public system, who are in the private system, health insurance has gotten so expensive that they can't afford it on their salaries. Okay, I, and so cost I, let, let, is let me, everything. Let me hold on there. Let me come back to Washington, D.C. I think that's a fair statement. He said that Basically, people say health care is very expensive. And I think if you pulled everybody in this newsroom or anybody else across the street, they would all say the same thing. But here's the question. It's either this plan or the one that we had prior to Obamacare. Is that, is that, is that the argument? Because are things getting better or are they getting worse for Americans' medical well, situation? Well, see, that, that's the thing. Well, part of the, part of the problem we have is that Medicare health care costs are rising regardless of uh, the technology that we're having, the improvements in technology. But... Again, that is still better than what we had before. There are lots of people who are, who are filing bankruptcy because they can't afford, they can't afford and they don't have health care insurance. This provides them with an opportunity to get that. Is there anything Obama could, now he's delayed some of the parts of Obamacare, but is there anything he could say or do that would convince the people who dislike this bill? And there's a lot of them out there. Is there anything that he could do to convince them? Or is this a, is this a losing situation for No, him? I think one mistake that the administration is doing right now is that, well, one thing they're not doing is that they're not 
they're not sending out information on a regular basis that, in, in layman's terms. Because the problem that I'm seeing with, with businesses that I poll, people I've sp uh, spoken to, clients, is that they don't understand, they don't what understand that, it. They don't understand the bill. Okay. They don't know what it entails for them and how that helps them. Ulvik, I'm going to give you a chance here to speak with the president and uh, everybody who is um, on his administration. If you could change one thing about the bill that you could change, what would that be? Well, I've actually articulated a plan with Doug holtz and the former director of the Congressional Budget Office that would entail reforming Obamacare and making significant changes to deregulate the exchanges so that the insurance plans offered on the exchanges would be a lot more affordable than they are today, and then gradually migrating the people on the existing pre-existing programs, Medicaid, Medicare, the employer-sponsor system, put them into the exchanges so everyone's in the same system. We're actually devoting our scarce resources to the people who need them, that is low-income people and really sick people, and we're not subsidizing everyone else. And if we did that, we would spend a fraction of what we spend today. Singapore spends one-seventh of what the United States spends on health care. They have universal coverage because they have high deductible health plans and health savings accounts, and that's by far the most efficient way to administer a national health system. Let, so let me I, take, let me take say, a slight derivative of the, the health care for just a moment here, and let's talk about the cost of drugs, because this is a very big topic as well, and it's very much related to Obamacare. Why are the costs of drugs so high in America? The drug companies say they need to make money. But wait a minute. Drugs around the rest of the world are priced very differently than they are here in the United States, obviously Canada being one of them. Ulvik? That's a, that's a misconception a lot of people have. So actually, if you look at drug spending in the United States, it's about 9 or 10 percent of the overall national health expenditures. And the, 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 pr the proportion of drug prescriptions in the United States that are branded versus generic. So about 80 percent of all medical prescriptions, drug prescriptions in the United States, are for cheap generic drugs that cost as much as a can of Coke. Whereas in countries like Europe, in, or in continents like Europe, in, in UK, Germany, Italy, France, you see a wide range, but it's generally about 11, 15, 30, 40 percent. So there's a lot, uh, the, the, the branded prices are, high, are lower in Europe than they are in the U.S. But what you find is actually the use of cheap generic drugs is much higher in the United States. So All we right. have a much more efficient market, and we actually spend less. If you look at a typical drug company, they make a lot more money selling their drugs in Europe than they do in the U.S. Because the uh, drugs Roy, basically never go off that. I apologize. I'm going to have to cut you off there, senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. We're, we're out of time. I wish we had more time for this, guys. Ivana Ek, I think I know what you're going to say, but ho hold your thought for the next time you're back on this show. It's great to have you in Washington, D.C., consultant with Levity uh, Consulting.